20 TV stars who tragically died during production. Welcome to our channel, The Famous People. Today, we're honoring the incredible TV stars whose lives were tragically cut short while their shows were still in production. From unforgettable performances to their lasting impact on audiences, these stars left behind remarkable legacies. Join us as we remember their work and the mark they made on television history. Make sure to watch till the end and share your thoughts in the comments. Lynn Thigpen Lynn Thigpen was a highly respected American actress, best known for her role as the chief on the popular PBS game show, Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego? which helped introduce her to a generation of young viewers. Her commanding presence, sharp wit, and distinctive voice made her an unforgettable part of the show. In addition to this iconic role, Thigpen was also celebrated for her portrayal of Ella Mae Farmer on the CBS drama The District. This series followed the inner workings of Washington, D.C.'s police department, with Thigpen's character playing a vital role in supporting the central team. Lynn had already filmed most of the third season of The District when tragedy struck in March 2003. She passed away unexpectedly at the age of 54 due to a cerebral hemorrhage. The suddenness of her death shocked her fans and colleagues alike. In response, the writers decided to mirror this loss on the show by writing her character's exit as a result of a sudden stroke, echoing the real-life tragedy. Thigpen's contributions to television were significant, and her range as an actress extended far beyond her roles on screen. She was also a talented stage actress, winning a Tony Award in 1997 for her performance in An American Daughter. Her ability to bring depth and authenticity to every role made her a beloved figure in the industry. Though she left us far too soon, her legacy continues to resonate through her memorable performances, particularly in roles that captivated audiences and showcased her versatility, Christopher Evan Welch. Christopher Evan Welch was an immensely talented actor who left an indelible mark on both television and film, despite his career being tragically cut short. Best known for his role as Peter Gregory in HBO's hit comedy series Silicon Valley, Welch played a quirky, eccentric billionaire investor. His character became a fan favorite for his odd yet brilliant demeanor, as Peter Gregory often found himself competing against fellow tech mogul Gavin Belson, each vying for an algorithm created by the show's protagonist, Richard. Welch's portrayal of Gregory was praised for its depth, humor, and unique charm, which made him a standout among the ensemble cast. However, during the filming of the first season, Welch received devastating news that the stage 3 lung cancer he had previously battled had returned and metastasized to his brain. He continued to work through the pain, but shortly after completing the fifth episode, his condition rapidly deteriorated and he passed away at the age of 48 in December 2013. His sudden death left the production team and his co-stars deeply affected. In the show, his character was written out by having Peter Gregory die while on a business trip to the Serengeti. Despite his short time on Silicon Valley, Welch's portrayal of Gregory left an unforgettable impact on the series and its fans. Beyond television, Christopher Evan Welch had a distinguished career in theater, as well as memorable roles in films like Lincoln and The Master. His ability to blend subtle humor with profound emotion made him a versatile actor, and his loss is still felt in the entertainment world today. Miguel Ferrer Miguel Ferrer was a dynamic and versatile actor, widely recognized for his powerful screen presence and distinct, gravelly voice. Ferrer gained immense popularity for his role as assistant director Owen Granger on NCIS Los Angeles, a character he portrayed from 2012 until his untimely passing in 2017. Known for playing tough, no-nonsense characters, Ferrer brought Granger to life with a blend of stern authority and hidden vulnerability, making him a fan favorite over the course of more than 100 episodes. Sadly, Ferrer was diagnosed with throat cancer during his time on the show. 
His illness was incorporated into the storyline, with his character also developing terminal cancer to explain Ferrer's increasing hoarseness. The actor continued to work through his illness, a testament to his professionalism and dedication, until his final appearance in the season 8 episode titled Payback. Following his death, the show paid tribute to Ferrer by writing Granger out in a poignant manner. In a later episode, it was revealed that Granger fled the hospital where he was being treated, leaving behind a farewell note. It was later confirmed that the character had died. Miguel Ferrer passed away on January 19, 2017, at the age of 61. Beyond NCIS, Los Angeles, Ferrer had a prolific career in both television and film, appearing in Twin Peaks, Robocop, and Traffic. His ability to convey intensity, wit, and depth across a wide variety of roles made him one of Hollywood's most respected character actors. Ferrer's legacy continues to endure, and his contributions to the entertainment industry are fondly remembered by his colleagues and fans alike. Nancy Marchand Nancy Marchand was a highly esteemed actress, celebrated for her commanding screen presence and extraordinary versatility. She is perhaps best known for her unforgettable portrayal of Livia Soprano, the manipulative and domineering mother of Tony Soprano, in HBO's critically acclaimed series, The Sopranos. Livia was one of the most complex and chilling characters on the show, and Marchand's masterful performance earned her widespread recognition including a Golden Globe Award for Best Supporting Actress. As one of television's most memorable matriarchs, her role became iconic for its cold-hearted manipulation and psychological torment over her son, adding immense depth to the series. Marchand's health began to deteriorate during the production of the second season of The Sopranos, as she was battling lung cancer and empyema. Despite her illness, she continued to deliver powerful performances, though her screen time was significantly reduced due to her declining health. Sadly, she passed away on June 18, 2000 at the age of 71, just before the third season began filming. In response to her death, The Sopranos writers crafted a storyline in which Livia Soprano dies of a sudden stroke, paralleling Marchand's real-life passing. The third season episode, Proshai Levushka, provided a tribute to both the character and the actress, using CGI technology to create one final scene with Livia before her departure. Though Marchand was no longer physically present on the show, her character's influence continued to haunt Tony and remained a significant part of the series' emotional core. Nancy Marchand left an indelible legacy not only through The Sopranos, but also through her extensive career in theater, television, and film. Her ability to command attention with quiet authority and emotional complexity made her a revered figure in the acting world. Adam West Adam West was a beloved actor best known for his iconic portrayal of Batman in the 1960s television series Batman. His portrayal of the caped crusader was filled with campy charm, humor, and over-the-top antics, making him a pop culture legend. Though the show only ran for three seasons from 1966 to 1968, West's performance left a lasting impression, turning him into a symbol of the lighter side of superhero lore. While his time as Batman initially pigeonholed him in similar roles, West eventually embraced his association with the character and became a beloved figure among fans of all generations. In his later career, Adam West found a second wave of success playing an exaggerated version of himself on the animated series Family Guy. He voiced the comical eccentric mayor Adam West, bringing a self-deprecating wit to the character. The role allowed West to poke fun at his own persona and became one of the show's standout recurring characters. His humorous portrayal of the clueless mayor was a fan favorite, and his partnership with Family Guy creator Seth MacFarlane resulted in some of the show's most memorable moments. Adam West passed away in June 2017 at the age of 88, following a battle with leukemia. Prior to his passing, 
West had recorded several episodes of Family Guy, ensuring that his character remained part of the show for a while after his death. Eventually, the character of Mayor Adam West was retired in a heartfelt tribute in the show's 17th season, marking the end of an era. West's legacy extends far beyond his roles, as he was a figure who embraced both his past and his fans with good humor. His contributions to television and popular culture remain cherished, and his role as Batman continues to inspire nostalgia and affection in viewers worldwide. Nicholas Colasanto Nicholas Colasanto was a talented actor and director, best known for his role as the lovable but somewhat dim-witted coach Ernie Pantuso on the hit television sitcom Cheers. Before his role on Cheers, Colasanto had a successful career in television and film, both in front of and behind the camera. He directed numerous episodes of popular TV shows, including Hawaii Five-O and Starsky and Hutch, but it was his portrayal of Coach that made him a household name. Coach Pantuso, a former baseball coach with a heart of gold, became one of the show's most beloved characters, known for his warmth, humor, and affectionate relationship with the regular patrons at the bar. Colasanto's performance was marked by a natural charm that made Coach both endearing and unforgettable. His role on Cheers brought him immense popularity, and he became a central figure in the show's early seasons. Unfortunately, Colasanto's health began to decline during the production of the third season due to a long-standing heart condition. His co-stars and crew noticed his weight loss and increasing difficulty in remembering lines. Despite these struggles, Colasanto remained dedicated to his role until his death. He passed away on February 12, 1985, at the age of 61, after suffering a heart attack. After Colasanto's death, the writers of Cheers decided to honor him by writing his character out in a respectful manner. In the fourth season, it was revealed that Coach had passed away, and Woody Harrelson's character, Woody Boyd, was introduced as a replacement. Though Colasanto was no longer present, his legacy as coach lived on, and his character was fondly remembered throughout the rest of the series. Nicholas Colasanto's warmth, talent, and dedication to his craft left a lasting impression on Cheers and on television history. Larry Hagman Larry Hagman was a television icon, best remembered for his portrayal of the cunning and ruthless oil tycoon J.R. Ewing on the long-running primetime soap opera Dallas. His performance as J.R. captivated audiences around the world, making him one of television's most memorable villains. With his trademark cowboy hat and devilish grin, Hagman brought to life a character who was as charming as he was devious, manipulating everyone around him in his pursuit of power and wealth. His portrayal of J.R. earned him widespread acclaim and made Dallas a global phenomenon, particularly during the famous Who Shot J.R. storyline, which became one of the most watched television events in history. Before Dallas, Hagman had already achieved fame with his role as Major Tony Nelson on the hit sitcom I Dream of Genie in the 1960s. As the straight-laced astronaut trying to keep his genie's magical powers a secret, Hagman showcased his comedic talents, which made him a household name. However, it was his transformation into J.R. Ewing that cemented his status as a television legend. In 2012, Hagman reprised his role as J.R. for the Dallas Revival on TNT. Tragically, during production, Hagman was diagnosed with stage 2 throat cancer. He went into remission but was later diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia. Despite his illness, Hagman continued working, determined to bring J.R. back to the screen. He passed away on November 23, 2012, at the age of 81. The writers of the Dallas Revival honored Hagman by incorporating J.R.'s death into the storyline, crafting a fitting send-off for the character. The episode, titled The Furious and the Fast, dealt with J.R.'s murder and became a significant plot point in the show. Hagman's legacy as J.R. Ewing continues to resonate, 
as his performance redefined the TV villain archetype and made Dallas a cultural touchstone. Bill Paxton Bill Paxton was a versatile and beloved actor, known for his roles in blockbuster films and acclaimed television series alike. His career spanned multiple decades, with standout performances in movies like Aliens, Twister, Titanic, and Apollo 13, where he showcased his ability to bring charm, intensity, and vulnerability to a wide variety of characters. Paxton's natural on-screen presence made him a favorite among fans and peers, solidifying his reputation as a dependable and talented actor across multiple genres. In 2017, Paxton took on a leading role in the CBS television series Training Day, which was a follow-up to the popular 2001 film of the same name. In the series, he played Frank Rourke, a morally ambiguous and corrupt detective similar to the character Denzel Washington portrayed in the original film. Paxton's portrayal of Rourke was gritty and captivating, as he delivered a complex performance that brought nuance to the role of a man operating in the gray areas of law enforcement. Sadly, Paxton's time on training day was cut short when he passed away unexpectedly in February 2017 due to complications from heart surgery. The surgery was intended to repair a faulty heart valve, but complications led to a fatal stroke just days after the procedure. Paxton was 61 years old at the time of his death, and his sudden passing sent shockwaves through the entertainment industry. Despite his passing, CBS aired the remaining episodes of Training Day, but the series was eventually canceled. Paxton's final role in the show highlighted his continued commitment to pushing boundaries in his performances. Beyond Training Day, Bill Paxton's extensive body of work and his ability to bring depth and authenticity to every role made him one of Hollywood's most respected and cherished actors. His legacy continues to be celebrated, and his contributions to film and television remain timeless. Red Fox Red Fox was a groundbreaking comedian and actor, known for his raw and often racy style of humor that pushed boundaries and opened doors for future generations of comedians. His sharp wit and fearless delivery made him a standout performer during the 1960s and 1970s when he gained national fame for his stand-up comedy. Fox's humor often touched on taboo topics, blending social commentary with a unique brand of humor that resonated deeply with audiences, particularly within the African-American community. Fox became a household name when he starred as Fred G. Sanford in the hit television sitcom Sanford and Son, which aired from 1972 to 1977. In the show, he played a cantankerous junk dealer who often clashed with his son, Lamont, while delivering some of the most memorable one-liners in TV history. His catchphrases, like, You Big Dummy, and his exaggerated mock heart attacks, where he'd clutch his chest and exclaim, This is the big one, became iconic. Sanford and Son was a major success, making Fox one of the first black actors to lead a popular primetime television series. Later in his career, Fox returned to TV with The Royal Family, a sitcom produced by Eddie Murphy. Unfortunately, tragedy struck during rehearsals on October 11, 1991, when Fox suffered a fatal heart attack on set. At first, his colleagues thought he was performing one of his famous fake heart attacks, but it soon became clear that something was seriously wrong. He was rushed to the hospital but passed away shortly after at the age of 68. Red Fox's legacy as a comedian and TV pioneer is profound. His role in Sanford and Son and his groundbreaking comedy paved the way for future black performers in Hollywood. His fearless approach to comedy and his indomitable spirit continue to influence comedians and actors today. Steve Irwin Steve Irwin, widely known as the Crocodile Hunter, was an Australian wildlife expert, conservationist, and television personality who captured the hearts of millions with his boundless enthusiasm and passion for animals. Irwin became a global icon through his television series, The Crocodile Hunter, which first aired in 1996 and ran until 2007. His infectious energy, signature catchphrase, crikey, 
logically and fearless approach to interacting with dangerous wildlife made him a beloved figure worldwide. He brought viewers face to face with creatures like crocodiles, snakes, and sharks, all while promoting conservation and education about the natural world. Irwin grew up surrounded by animals, as his parents ran a wildlife park, which he later turned into the famous Australia Zoo. His larger-than-life personality and dedication to wildlife conservation made him more than just a TV star. He became a passionate advocate for preserving endangered species and protecting the environment. Alongside his wife, Terry Irwin, Steve worked tirelessly to educate the public about the importance of respecting wildlife and supporting conservation efforts. Tragically, Irwin's life was cut short in 2006 while filming a documentary titled Ocean's Deadliest. During a routine underwater shoot on the Great Barrier Reef, Irwin was fatally injured by a stingray, which pierced his chest with its barb. He passed away at the age of 44 from blood loss caused by the injury. The sudden and shocking nature of his death devastated fans and left a lasting impact on the world. Despite his untimely death, Irwin's legacy lives on through his family and their ongoing work at Australia Zoo. His children, Bindi and Robert, have followed in their father's footsteps, continuing his mission to educate and inspire the next generation about wildlife conservation. Steve Irwin's deep love for animals, boundless energy, and enduring message of conservation remain a powerful influence on both environmental efforts and popular culture worldwide. Freddie Prince Freddie Prince was a rising star in the 1970s, best known for his role as Chico Rodriguez on the NBC sitcom Chico and the Man. Born to Puerto Rican and German-Hungarian parents, Prince became one of the first Latino actors to achieve mainstream success on American television. His charming portrayal of Chico, a young mechanic working in an East Los Angeles garage, won the hearts of viewers. The show, which ran from 1974 to 1978, focused on the relationship between Chico and Ed Brown, a grouchy older man played by Jack Albertson. The chemistry between the two actors was a key factor in the show's success, and Prince's charisma quickly made him a star. At just 22 years old, Freddie Prince was at the peak of his career, with a bright future ahead of him in both television and stand-up comedy. However, despite his professional success, Prince struggled with personal issues, including depression and drug use. In late 1976, his marriage to Kathy Prince was falling apart, and his emotional turmoil deepened. Just two months after she filed for divorce, Freddie Prince took his own life on January 29, 1977. He was 22 years old at the time of his death, and his passing sent shockwaves through Hollywood and his fan base. Following Prince's death, Chico and the Man continued for one more season, but it was never the same without its charismatic star. His role was briefly filled by a replacement character, Raul, but the show's ratings dropped, leading to its cancellation in 1978. Despite his short life and career, Freddie Prince left an enduring legacy. He paved the way for future Latino actors in Hollywood, and his son, Freddie Prince Jr., went on to become a successful actor in his own right. Prince's tragic death remains a sobering reminder of the pressures of fame and the importance of mental health. Luke Perry Luke Perry was a beloved actor best known for his iconic role as Dylan McKay on the hit television series Beverly Hills, 90210. Perry became a teen idol in the 1990s thanks to his portrayal of the brooding, rebellious heartthrob, which made him a household name. His character Dylan resonated with viewers for his depth and emotional complexity as he struggled with issues like addiction, family conflict, and romance throughout the series. Perry's performance helped propel Beverly Hills 90210 to massive popularity, and he remained one of the show's most enduring figures even after leaving the series in the mid-1990s, later returning in the early 2000s. In 2017, 
Perry experienced a career resurgence with his role as Fred Andrews, the father of Archie, in the popular CW series Riverdale. As Fred, Perry showcased a different side of his acting abilities, playing a grounded, caring, and supportive parent in the midst of the show's dramatic and often dark narrative. His portrayal of Fred was praised for its sincerity, and his presence brought a sense of warmth and stability to the show. Tragically, while filming the third season of Riverdale, Perry suffered a massive stroke in February 2019. Despite being placed on life support, he passed away on March 4, 2019, at the age of 52. His sudden death devastated fans and colleagues alike, and his absence left a significant void in the entertainment world. Following his passing, Riverdale honored Perry with a heartfelt tribute in the season four premiere. The episode mirrored real life, with Fred Andrews dying in a hit-and-run accident, and it featured a moving appearance by Perry's former 90210 co-star, Shannon Doherty. Perry's legacy continues through his body of work, which spanned decades and left an indelible mark on television. Known for his kindness and humility off-screen, Luke Perry is remembered as much for his talent as for the positive impact he had on those around him. Corey Monteith Corey Monteith was a talented Canadian actor and musician, best known for his role as Finn Hudson on the hit musical television series Glee. Monteith's portrayal of Finn, a kind-hearted yet conflicted high school quarterback turned Glee Club star, made him a beloved figure on the show and endeared him to fans worldwide. His character's journey from popular jock to aspiring musician reflected Monteith's own charm and authenticity, helping him stand out in the ensemble cast. Glee became a cultural phenomenon, with Monteith's Finn at the heart of many of the show's most memorable moments, both in its musical numbers and emotional storylines. While Monteith's on-screen persona was that of an optimistic leader, he struggled with addiction off-screen. He was open about his issues, which had begun in his teenage years, and sought treatment several times throughout his life. In March 2013, during the fourth season of Glee, Monteith checked into a rehab facility to address his substance use disorder. Although he completed treatment, tragedy struck just a few months later. On July 13, 2013, Monteith was found dead in a hotel room in Vancouver, Canada, after a fatal overdose of heroin and alcohol. He was 31 years old at the time of his passing, and his death left the entertainment industry and his fans in shock. Production on Glee was temporarily halted, and the show later aired an emotional tribute episode titled The Quarterback, which honored both Monteith and his character Finn Hudson. The episode featured performances and heartfelt moments from the cast as they grieved their friend's loss. Corey Monteith's death was a stark reminder of the struggles many face with addiction, and his openness about his own battles raised awareness of the issue. Though his life was tragically cut short, Monteith's legacy lives on through his work on Glee and the impact he had on fans and peers alike. His memory remains an integral part of the show's history, and his portrayal of Finn Hudson continues to resonate with audiences. John Spencer John Spencer was an acclaimed actor best known for his Emmy-winning role as Leo McGarry, the tough yet compassionate White House Chief of Staff on the critically acclaimed political drama The West Wing. Spencer's portrayal of McGarry a seasoned politician and trusted confidant of President Josiah Bartlett earned him widespread recognition and praise. His character was not only a skilled political operator, but also a recovering alcoholic, adding depth and vulnerability to his role. Spencer's nuanced performance made Leo McGarry a central figure on the show, and his on-screen presence contributed significantly to the West Wing's success. Before The West Wing, Spencer had a long and varied career in television, film, and theater. He gained early recognition for his role on the legal drama L.A. Law, where he played the passionate attorney Tommy Mullaney. He also appeared in notable films like Presumed Innocent and The Rock. 
However, it was his work on the West Wing that defined his career as he brought both gravitas and warmth to the role of Leo, creating a character who was both a father figure to the staff and a moral compass for the administration. Sadly, John Spencer passed away on December 16, 2005, from a heart attack just four days before his 59th birthday. At the time of his death, the West Wing was in its final season, and Spencer's character was running as vice president on the ticket of Matt Santos, played by Jimmy Smits. In response to Spencer's sudden passing, the show's writers chose to mirror real life by having Leo McGarry also die of a heart attack. This event was written into the final episodes of the series, and the show paid tribute to both the character and the actor in its closing moments. John Spencer's legacy as an actor continues through his body of work, particularly his powerful performance on the West Wing. His ability to convey strength, vulnerability, and deep emotion made him a beloved figure in television, and his passing was felt deeply by fans and colleagues alike. Spencer's portrayal of Leo McGarry remains one of the most memorable performances in TV history, and his contributions to the series are still celebrated. Mary Kay Bergman Mary Kay Bergman was a remarkably talented voice actress, best known for her work on the animated series South Park, where she voiced nearly all of the female characters during the show's first three seasons. Bergman brought to life characters like Sharon Marsh, Sheila Broflovsky, Wendy Testaberger, and Leanne Cartman, showcasing her incredible versatility and ability to embody a wide range of personalities. Her performances helped shape the tone and humor of South Park, contributing to the show's early success and its reputation for pushing boundaries with its sharp satire. Beyond South Park, Bergman had an extensive career in voice acting, working on projects for Disney, including providing the voice of Snow White for various appearances and theme park attractions. Her ability to switch seamlessly between characters and her knack for bringing warmth, humor, and energy to her roles made her one of the most sought-after voice actors in the industry. Bergman also used the stage name Shannon Cassidy during her time on South Park to remain anonymous, particularly because she was also the official voice of Disney's Snow White at the time. Despite her professional success, Bergman struggled with mental health issues, including anxiety and depression, which she kept hidden from her friends and colleagues. In November 1999, following her mother's cancer diagnosis and a worsening of her own mental health, Bergman tragically took her own life at the age of 38. Her sudden death shocked both the entertainment industry and the South Park team, who were unaware of the extent of her internal struggles. Bergman's death left a void in the world of voice acting, and the creators of South Park chose to honor her by hiring multiple voice actresses to replace her, rather than relying on just one person to fill her many roles. Mary Kay Bergman's immense talent, energy, and contributions to animation have left a lasting legacy, and she is remembered for the unforgettable characters she brought to life and the profound impact she had on the industry. John Eric Hexham John Eric Hexham was a promising young actor and model whose career was tragically cut short by a fatal on-set accident. Best known for his roles in the television series Voyagers and Cover Up, Hexham had a charismatic screen presence and a rugged all-American look that made him a rising star in Hollywood during the early 1980s. His work in Voyagers introduced him as Phineas Bogg, a time-traveling adventurer, while cover-up saw him playing Mac Harper, a handsome undercover operative working in the world of espionage. Hexham's physicality and good looks positioned him for a successful future in action and adventure roles, and his career seemed poised to take off. However, on October 12, 1984, a tragic accident occurred on the set of cover-up that would end his life. During a break in filming, Hexham, in a moment of playful boredom, placed a prop gun loaded with blanks to his temple and pulled the trigger. Although blanks do not contain bullets, the wadding and gas expelled by the shot caused a significant head injury. 
Hexham was rushed to the hospital, but he had suffered severe brain trauma and was declared brain dead six days later at the age of 26. Following his death, Hexham's organs were donated, a decision that saved the lives of several individuals, including a five-year-old boy who received one of his kidneys. His final show, Cover Up, continued without him, but the series was eventually canceled after its first season. John Eric Hexham's tragic death sent shockwaves through the industry and became a cautionary tale about the dangers of using even seemingly harmless prop weapons on set. Despite his brief career, Hexham left a lasting impact with his talent, charm, and potential, and his untimely passing remains a sorrowful chapter in Hollywood history. Andy Whitfield Andy Whitfield was a Welsh-born actor who gained worldwide recognition for his powerful portrayal of Spartacus in the star's television series, Spartacus, Blood and Sand. Whitfield's intense performance as the legendary gladiator captivated audiences, and his physicality, charisma, and emotional depth made him a perfect fit for the role. He became a breakout star through his work on the show, which chronicled the rise of Spartacus from a slave to a leader of a rebellion against the Roman Empire. Whitfield's commanding presence and raw portrayal of the character were central to the show's success. Unfortunately, Whitfield's rising career was abruptly halted when he was diagnosed with stage 4 non-Hodgkin lymphoma in 2010, just after the first season of Spartacus had concluded. Determined to fight the disease, he underwent treatment and initially seemed to have beaten the cancer, going into remission by mid-2010. However, just a few months later, the cancer returned aggressively, and Whitfield was forced to step down from the role as he resumed his battle with the illness. As Whitfield underwent treatment, stars delayed production of the second season of Spartacus to allow him time to recover. However, as his condition worsened, the show recast the role, with actor Liam McIntyre taking over as Spartacus for subsequent seasons. Despite his courage and determination, Whitfield succumbed to the disease on September 11, 2011, at the age of 39. In the aftermath of his death, Whitfield's wife, Vashti, created the documentary Be Here Now, which chronicled his journey through cancer treatment and his unwavering positivity in the face of such a life-altering battle. Andy Whitfield's legacy lives on not only through his unforgettable performance as Spartacus, but also through his inspiring strength and resilience. His passing was a great loss to both the entertainment world and the many fans who admired him. John Ritter John Ritter was a beloved actor and comedian whose career spanned several decades, but he is perhaps best remembered for his iconic role as Jack Tripper on the hit sitcom Three's Company. Ritter's portrayal of the bumbling, lovable bachelor who pretended to be gay to live with two female roommates in a conservative era showcased his exceptional talent for physical comedy and impeccable timing. His performance on Three's Company earned him widespread acclaim, including a Primetime Emmy Award and a Golden Globe, and made him one of the most recognized faces in television during the late 1970s and early 1980s. Ritter's comedic chops were unmatched, and his ability to blend slapstick humor with genuine warmth made him a fan favorite. He continued to enjoy success throughout his career, appearing in numerous television shows and films, including Problem Child, Sling Blade, and Bad Santa. His versatility as an actor allowed him to take on both comedic and dramatic roles, showcasing his range. In 2002, Ritter returned to network television with Eight Simple Rules for Dating My Teenage Daughter, a family sitcom in which he played Paul Hennessy, a loving but overprotective father of two teenage daughters. The show was well received and Ritter's relatable performance helped it become a hit. However, tragedy struck in September 2003 when Ritter collapsed on set during a rehearsal. Initially thought to be having a heart attack, Ritter was rushed to the hospital, where it was discovered that he was suffering from an aortic dissection, a rare but often fatal condition. Despite efforts to save him, Ritter passed away on September 11, 2003, at the age of 54. Ritter's death shocked the entertainment industry, 
and the eight Simple Rules cast and crew were left heartbroken. The show continued for two more seasons, addressing Paul Hennessy's death in a heartfelt episode that honored both the character and the actor. John Ritter's warmth, humor, and genuine charm made him a beloved figure, and his contributions to television and film continue to be celebrated. His legacy as one of America's most beloved comedic actors remains strong, with fans and peers remembering him for the joy he brought to their lives. Jim Henson Jim Henson was a visionary puppeteer, filmmaker, and creator. Best known for bringing beloved characters like Kermit the Frog, Miss Piggy, and Big Bird to life. As the mastermind behind The Muppets, Sesame Street, and Fraggle Rock, Henson's contributions to children's entertainment and puppetry revolutionized television and film, inspiring generations with his creativity, imagination, and heartwarming characters. His work transcended age groups, captivating both children and adults alike with his unique blend of humor, wit, and emotional depth. Henson's career took off in the 1960s when he introduced the Muppets to the world. These lovable, quirky puppets became a staple of popular culture, eventually leading to the creation of The Muppet Show, which became a worldwide sensation in the 1970s. His most iconic character, Kermit the Frog, became the show's central figure, known for his optimistic yet often exasperated personality. The show featured a mix of comedy sketches, musical numbers, and guest stars, and it became a beloved television institution. Henson's ability to combine humor with meaningful messages made his work stand out and resonate with audiences of all ages. In addition to The Muppets, Henson played a pivotal role in the success of Sesame Street, where he created and voiced several characters, including Ernie. His characters were not just puppets, they were fully realized personalities that taught children important lessons about friendship, kindness, and understanding. Beyond television, Henson also directed films such as The Dark Crystal and Labyrinth, showcasing his ability to push the boundaries of puppetry and filmmaking. Sadly, Jim Henson passed away suddenly on May 16, 1990, at the age of 53, from toxic shock syndrome caused by a bacterial infection. His death shocked the world, as Henson had remained an active creative force up until his passing. Following his death, Voice actor Steve Whitmire took over the role of Kermit the Frog, and Henson's company continued his legacy of innovation in puppetry and entertainment. Jim Henson's influence on the entertainment industry is immeasurable. His characters and stories continue to bring joy to millions, and his contributions to puppetry and children's education remain groundbreaking. His work emphasized creativity, empathy, and wonder leaving behind a legacy that still touches hearts and inspires minds around the world. Phil Hartman Phil Hartman was an extraordinarily gifted comedian, actor, and voice artist, beloved for his sharp wit, impeccable timing, and ability to transform into a wide range of memorable characters. Best known for his work on Saturday Night Live, SNL, and his voice roles on The Simpsons, Hartman's versatility and humor left an indelible mark on the world of comedy. Hartman joined SNL in 1986 and quickly became one of the show's standout performers. His incredible range allowed him to master impersonations, from political figures like Bill Clinton to fictional characters like Frankenstein. Dubbed the glue by his castmates for holding sketches together, Hartman's professionalism and comedic talent made him a key player during his eight seasons on the show. His portrayals of characters such as the sleazy news anchor and unfrozen caveman lawyer became fan favorites. Hartman's work on SNL earned him an Emmy Award, and his contributions helped define one of the show's most successful eras. In addition to SNL, Hartman's voice work on The Simpsons became another defining aspect of his career. He voiced characters like Troy McClure, the over-the-top actor, and Lionel Hutz, the inept lawyer, both of whom added layers of satire and humor to the beloved animated series. His smooth, distinctive voice made these characters instantly recognizable, 
and they became some of the most iconic recurring figures on the show. Beyond his television success, Hartman also starred in the NBC sitcom News Radio, where he played the arrogant and comically self-centered news anchor Bill McNeil. His performance added to the ensemble's chemistry and further solidified Hartman's status as one of comedy's most versatile talents. Tragically, Phil Hartman's life was cut short in 1998, when he was killed by his wife, Bryn Hartman, in a murder-suicide at their home. He was 49 years old. His sudden and violent death shocked the entertainment world and left fans devastated. Following his passing, Hartman's characters on The Simpsons were honorably retired, and his colleagues paid heartfelt tributes to his memory. Phil Hartman's legacy as a comedic genius lives on through his work, which continues to entertain and inspire. His unique ability to blend humor with intelligence, his flawless impersonations, and his unforgettable characters have left an enduring impact on the world of comedy. The tragic loss of these talented TV stars reminds us of the fleeting nature of life and the impact they left behind in their performances. Their contributions continue to resonate with fans around the world, and we are fortunate to have witnessed their incredible talent. Which of these actors or actresses had the most profound effect on you? Let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share your memories in the comment section. And for more fascinating stories about the lives of famous people, make sure to subscribe to The Famous People and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Your support means everything to us.